Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, uh, and I'm joined here by the one and only G Jesus? Dejus. Dejus. <laughs> not Dejus. Not Jesus. It's not Fajistic, man. Fajistic. <laughs> um, What's up, everyone? Uh, Mengs, thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, something we agreed on uh, shortly after we recorded our first video. I was like, you know what, Dejus, we should, we should have a match. And uh, then we're gonna, then you're gonna beat me horribly, and then we're gonna analyze it afterwards to see, you know, what did I do right, what did I do wrong, and um, you know, like I'm sorry for spoiling the match, but you know, like this, <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert, it didn't go well for me. That being said, it, it actually went better than I thought it would, but um, I think it's it's immensely helpful to take a look at your map match. Uh, after you're done playing it and see all the little mistakes you did. I know for a fact that I did a couple of big mistakes, but uh, I'm actually curious. Yeah. I haven't checked out this game since we played it, so I'm actually very curious to see exactly like where everything went wrong uh, and analyze all the little bits and pieces of the match. I think there's a lot of, of knowledge that can be gained from a match like this. Yeah, I think you actually played pretty well overall. Uh, I think there's just a few things that snowballed, and we'll mm -hmm. go over those in detail later, but I think you have some pretty good fundamentals. Yeah, so um, we picked this map, uh, Stalingrad. It is one of my least favorite maps. A apparently, you like it a lot. Yeah, so the reason I chose it is I started off being terrible at this map. The first map, I mean, the first time I played this, I was Sammy. And I got control of both comm towers, and I was like, oh, I win. Oh. But, like, half my army was dead at that point. Ah. And so I lost the map. So I slowly gotten better and better at this map. I think it's kind of like a comm tower, like noob trap map, where people like overcommit to the comm towers, uh, mm. and I was the noob for the first time. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we uh, we picked Stalingrad. It's actually been rotated out of the map pool now, so it's no longer in the league. But um, we still decided to play it because it's a map I hate, and I think I think it's good to play on maps you hate because you can try and find out why you're so terrible at certain maps and actually get good at them. You know, playing well on a map that you have a high win rate at, it's not that impressive. Uh, learning to play on a map you despise will make you a better player, at least that's what I think. Oh, definitely. And we both decided to pick tier 4 because, you know, the, I would say the lower, or uh, the higher the tier, I guess. Like, the, 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 the weaker the COs, the more the game revolves around the mechanics of the match, rather than just how good your CO is. Um, so you decided to pick your favorite CO. Well, favorite tier four CEO. Let's. That's not. A, I'm not. I'm not throwing Olaf under the bus, man. Yeah. Or even Hawk. Yeah, Jake. Yeah. So, uh, so, and I picked Adder. Uh, no surprise there. I would say I think Jake has a slight advantage in this matchup, just because the amount of plane that you have available here. First off, there's a ton of planes on this map for Jake, and I think Jake is strong here because once Jake gets one comm tower, and let's, I think like probably like 40% of this map, maybe even 50% is planes. He gets one comm tower and he gets the plane bonus. That's 20%. 20% firepower basically enables them to get like two hit KOs on a full HP tank using two of your own tanks 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. So, and also for infantry. So it's pretty nice to get guaranteed two hit KOs using like fully strong units. So yeah. I kept that in mind when I'm picking Jake for this map. Yeah, and that's super power, man. It hurts. It's it's really strong. I mean, I will statistically get my normal power like probably twice before you get your superpower. So I yeah. have to really make use of those extra two powers and try to tilt the game in my advantage because you're gonna get a huge death push when you pop um, Walk Rock. Is that God, such a stupid name? Yeah, <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> I just call it Jake Super. I don't yeah. even read that stuff. It's like, okay. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I say we just jump into the match, we start analyzing it, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to hear uh, DJ's opinions on this map. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a learning experience. So I'm player one here. Uh, DJ's to trigger my OCD, pick Blue Moon, even though he <laughs> plays uh, plays an orange star CO. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, both of us open up infantry, going for the base in the middle here. Nothing, uh, I don't think there's anything special going on here. We're both yeah, doing... Standard. Doing the same moves, I think. Uh, let's say if your infantry goes for this property right here. Yeah, just pick up the free properties, yeah. We do the same. Yeah, so this is, I think in the past, what I used to do a lot is I would like skip the initial properties to try and rush for the contested ones. I've learned since uh, that that's a very bad thing to do uh, because yeah, you're, it, you're losing so much income early on. Yeah, I, although you can do it in moderation, like for this one up here mm -hmm. and for this one down here. I don't normally, you, as you'll see, I don't actually go for that at first. Oh, uh, okay. Attempt. Yeah, but I don't also don't go straight for the middle or anything. Mm, okay, I see. So in moderation, as long as you're not like 
you know, it, it, different between play styles. Okay, we gotta watch out. The Advanced Force Police is outside uh, DJ's apartment right here. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can hear that? Uh -oh. Yeah, I can hear that. Uh, hello, we got reports of someone maining flack. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's on the loose. Don't let him in the Global Leagues. <laughs> oh, good. All right, so yeah. Um... If I remember correctly, here is your first mistake in this turn. Yeah, okay, why? Explain. Well, first let's make sure all units move so I can tell you. Okay, all right, okay, okay. So let's, uh, let's take a look at my turn here. I bad infantry, bad. You went back over here towards the top, towards the airport, when you should have went down, because oh. you have a capture chain right here, oh. and you'll get it next turn easily. Oh, look at Whereas that. this one has to waste the whole turn. And if you went down here, it would assist these two would be able to capture these properties a lot earlier, like I do with this prop with these infantry over here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Capture chains are very important, especially in the early game. If you can get like a bunch in a row, like down here, if you recognize if you get this one, mm -hmm. you can also get the comm tower to this one, or from here to the comm tower. You know, like just recognizing chains is very useful for capping in the early game. Yeah, and by that you mean like that the infantry will move from property to property on a turn-by-turn -turn basis without having like any dead turns in the center. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, all right, so already like one mistake spotted. Okay, so let's, let's continue spotting for mistakes. I think uh, it'll actually come into play later, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you go for the properties over here. You can see your, uh, yeah, and you do exactly the thing. You, you move down oh, here yeah. in the Tetris block formation to capture the <laughs> airport. Um, so let's see. So that, let's take a look at our incoming. Yeah, you open up recon here. You want to explain why why recon is a good opener for this map? Uh, any yeah, thoughts so behind I, this? Yeah. So when I first started this map, I was under the impression like always build tank, tank good, like mm -hmm. for fog of war battles. I think they hammer that home. Like when in doubt, build a tank. The I'm thing guilt, is, guilty as charged. I do say that a lot because I've yeah, been, I mean, I've it's been, like tanks have been used against me a lot lately. So it's just you know what I think. I feel like a lot, it's misleading for a lot of maps. If it's a larger map, a lot of the time recons are a lot better because it's going to take forever for a tank to even like get over towards your infantry. It's probably going to take three to four turns to do anything. Mm -hmm. And it costs so much at the beginning too. Uh, you're better off going recon, and the vision is the main reason you get a recon in the early game. Uh, with a recon, I'll be able to get vision of this general vicinity way earlier than a tank. Hmm, okay. All right. So um, I'm pretty sure, because uh, on my turn, we'll see what I open up with. So yeah, here I go for the two properties. I start capturing the airport, and I also go for a recon. So um, yeah. I think I'm not very fond of the recon opener, but I think my, my my general idea here was that I'm up against a very skilled player, and I want to see what he's doing. <laughs> so I, I, kind of, I opened up the recon more out of fear than anything else. You know, I just didn't want to be blindsided. And yeah, I guess this map, I mean, it does have some nice roads that the recon can travel alongside. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you send the recon along the edges here, it can get over here incredibly quickly. And this, this, this Stalingrad also has this, like, shoal area right here. Yeah. Which, shoals are basically roads for all intents and purposes. They are roads that you can unland on or unload on. So it's like a recon here is actually able to reach this area pretty quickly. And maybe you'll be able to interrupt a cap or two. We'll see. So... Your turn rolls in. Uh, I would like to start taking a look at our income differences to see if there's any big disparity in our capture phase. So, you are a property ahead of me, but I also think you are player two, so you do have an extra yeah, infantry. Yeah, it's a bit discrepancy. You won't really notice that much in the early like first like five or so turns because of uh, how yeah. the player one and player two start off. Uh, but I follow up with the recon with a tank. Now, this is the muscle behind the recon. Mm -hmm. The recon's kind of like the nail, and the tank's the hammer. Yeah, like, that's a good, uh, yeah, that's a good, uh, good analogy, yeah. All right, so day six rolls in, and uh, I, too, go for the properties. Moving out here. I think we're moving pretty much the same. And, yeah, even our recon movements are exactly mirrored. Both, <laughs> yeah. both, mo both moving exactly at the same spot, and I'm also opening. So at the very least, you know, oh, but here's the difference. I go two okay. tank instead of huh. your one, and uh, I can only imagine you're saving up for something right here, or maybe it's just the fact that my income is a little bit higher than yours. So no, I was. I mean, I wasn't saving up per se, but I, one thing about your tanks, I would tend to favor in fog. What's different about fog than standard is you typically want to go one strong side and one weak side. Yes. Or at the very least, if there's three fronts, you want to go strong two sides and weak one of the sides. You want to explain what you mean by strong and weak side, because that might be a new term to some sure. of the people watching. So in advanced wars, like 
for example, my strong side would be down here. I'm going towards this vicinity because I have a recon ready, I have a tank ready. Meanwhile, over here, all I have is infantry. This would be my weak side up here. This would be my strong side over here. The middle would be like, you know, in between, but you can always, if say I have a strong side down here, I can shift them over. So a strong side and weak side isn't permanent. It's mm. just as long as you have all your units there. Okay. And front, it's called front shifting when you shift from your strong side to your weak side. And players do it a lot. I think I did it a few times in this game, actually. So okay. you'll see it actually in action. So so this this right here would be my strong side, and this would be your strong side. Yes, but your seams are a little more even, since you have the tank over here. So now you have, like, a half-ass strong side and, like, a half-ass weak side. <laughs> okay, I, I see, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> all right. So the recon moves out. You start tapping. And now you also take this property right here, which I took earlier. Mm -hmm. Moving out with the infantry, moving out with the tank, and here comes your second tank. Follow it up on the strong yeah. side. So, and another thing about this infantry up here, I chose not to go over to this property because this one has a chain over here. You can go from there to there to there without ah, ever. Yeah, now I so see. So that's another thing about the chain, and that's why I chose this property as well because I'll be able to capture the comm tower or this one as well. So ah. just always keep chains in mind. Okay. Yeah, it's already extremely insightful. All right. Day 7 rolls in, uh, I move my recon, I think, yeah, I move it on the city instead, because I'm I'm fully expecting to to meet a recon at some point, uh, mm -hmm. I, I thought maybe you'd build a recon here, so I thought maybe by putting the recon on the city, uh, that will disincentivize you from attacking my recon with your recon, mm -hmm. I think that, that was, uh, I usually like to leave my vehicles on cities if I can. Okay. Uh, Typically, I don't take recon or recon fights. They're usually like, I don't know, do two or three damage to each other. Yeah. So I just ignore other recons usually. And sometimes <laughs> I won't even attack anything. I'm just, whatever, man. Like. Yeah, just using them for vision. You kill my infantry, I'll kill yours. Like, we're good. Hmm, okay. And here I decide to open transport uh, or build an early transport. It's not opening okay. a transport, but I'm building a transport. And um, I'm trying to think what I was thinking at this point. I, I think. Um, I actually don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Fair enough. Big big map. Get it just some, felt right. Get some, I, I would like to hear your thoughts on like, like I know you did a video on transports, but what do you think about transports on, on this map in particular? Do you think they're, it can, can work? They're not bad. I've seen an APC built from this base over here before earlier on. You're kind of doing it a little later. Usually if you want to build a transport, you probably want to build it before the tank, the recon. Mm -hmm. um, another thing about the transports, if it's just transporting one unit, like I usually don't use it, but if it's transporting a unit and also providing a boost for another unit, for example, if you move it over here, unload, and it like helps push other infantry forward, like, yeah, then I think it pays for itself. But if it's just moving one single infantry, I usually like avoid it. So yeah. you should have like a capture plan before you build it. Usually I don't just build like transports on whim. Mm -hmm. uh, although I did build one later in the game, but for transport openers, you want to have like a game plan and make sure it at least boosts other units. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because so th this may confuse some people who do, don't play a lot of Advanced Force by Web, but there's a big True. distinction with Advanced Force by Web. Uh, if you load an infantry into a transport, you can unload it in the same turn. You can actually do it multiple times. Uh, unloading is a free action in Advanced Force by Web. Uh, so one transport can theoretically unload up to three three infantry, I think, in a single turn if they are dropped off uh, adjacent to it. Um, this is just, I think it started off being a, a problem with the code, but then they just decided to keep it in because people liked it. That's that's what I, yeah, I, I know. I like you, it. I know you love it, but I'm an advanced force purist, and I don't like it. But um, no one would use it otherwise. So you know, you got to make it appealing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe maybe I'll come aboard the the transport train at some point. Oh, we'll it's see. We'll an see. Eventuality. Yeah. It's an eventuality. <laughs> <laughs> All you right. learn to love it. You you move your recon into the forest. Good position for it. You can scout the comm tower. You have the tank to follow it up. Solid place. And there's a second tank coming in as well. And a third and you see tank. See how I can safely capture this without your recon knowing because my capture chain was a little bit more planned out, whereas yours he went back over here, mm. so you're delayed getting your comm tower at this point due to that fact. Yeah, so is there a reason why you took your comm tower so early on this map? Because some people would say this is very early to take a comm tower. I would say very early. I'd say moderately early. A lot of the time people exert power on the com uh, force on the comm towers and try to take them, so I figured I'd just get it out of the way. Recon harassing like you're doing over here is very common on this map, so mm -hmm. I just kind of anticipated it and said, well, might as well a little rush towards it in anticipation of it. Yeah, for sure. All right, so day eight rolls in. 
And here, yeah, you can, I can you can already tell. Like, I feel like I'm not optimizing my infantry movement at all here. <laughs> um, definitely, I'm seeing it now. Like, it's not okay. And here, I move my tanks together. Um, this is because so many times when I play on this map, I move out a solitary tank and it gets attacked and I lose. Mm. So my so I'm like keep tank together so that if you strike me, I can strike you. At least that's what I've learned mm. playing on this map. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. And here, the transport copter moves. I put it in front of uh, the infantry that I intend to build. And I build two more tanks. And once again, I think this is the second tank that I build on my weak side. Or I guess this is my strong side, but uh, I'm about to meet a lot of tanks down here in the south. Of course, I don't know that at this point. I have no idea how many tanks you even have at this point. Um, <laughs> I think we haven't even seen each other yet. Yeah, no. since it's such a large map, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't... We've seen a single Yeah, unit, this, literally we have not spotted each other yet at this point. You just saw that one infantry on the tower, that's it. Yes. So here you move out, and uh, we're still even in terms of capture and income. Uh, you're one property ahead of me, which is normal, since you're infantry ahead of me. Um, and yeah, here you move your recon into the woods. And uh, if I had a tank, if I had built a tank, if I would built my first tank on, on this side, I think I would have been able to actually attack your recon, but because I don't have a tank here available, I don't think I'm, uh, I end up being able to attack it at all. And even if your tank was available and hit me, I, you typically won't care because recon, you know, reconnaissance, it's meant to get information. I'm mm. not really trying to kill units with it. I'm just trying to get, you know, fog of war cleared out of the way. So that's basically what I use my recon for in fog of war maps. Like I love one or two HP recons. Like. You think they're dead, but they're like awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know they can they can still see us far. And you open up uh, or you go battlecopter on uh, on uh, at the end of your turn. So um, yeah, I'm I remember this battlecopter bothering me a lot. So we'll see. Yeah. So the thing about battlecopters is there's a sweet spot. You want to build them pretty early on, or you want to build them pretty late on. In the middle game, they're always gonna have anti air. Mm. So you don't want to go like turn like 11 or something and then you build a copter because they're obviously gonna have an answer so i figured this was like probably the latest i could build it while still being early enough yeah okay so here uh i decided going for my counter look, look at how many units around this infantry with the infantry not being aware i'm like oh cool it's not gonna interrupt <laughs> my capture this infantry is perfectly safe <laughs> ready to feast yeah <laughs> cue the i'm in danger meme <laughs> uh, so yeah, and uh, yeah, just continue uh, using my transport right here. But yeah, you're right, I'm not really utilizing it for multiple infantry per turn. It's kind of just moving a single infantry and that's pretty much about it. Nor is this infantry arriving here really <laughs> changing anything. Yeah, it's not. That property was already going to get capped anyway. Yeah, so yeah, no, no, no real plan behind this transport at all. Here, you know, I just like to take a gamble here. Yeah. Taking out this infantry doesn't really change that much since you've already captured the tower. But I just yeah. assume you're going to have infantry here. And it turns out I was right. This was a pure gamble on my end. You could have had two tanks right here and I could have been demolished. This was Even a big... A single tank, yeah. Because you're on a road and I would have had the property attack. So, so it look, is risky. Looking at this, this is a big gamble for me with a very small payoff. Because all I'm getting out of it is an infantry kill. And it's not even a capping infantry. And I'm risking my tank. So looking at this, I don't think this was a very good move. Even though it ended up like giving me a free infantry, um, it did, it wasn't worth it in my opinion. Also, you love these like two split up tanks here. I think it's the third turn in a row you've done tank infantry tank. Like you have one tank here and so. yeah, I, I don't really know. I I guess it's just force of habit, really. I'm just like one tank on each side. I'm covered. Uh, I, th so I think I think is yeah. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, no. Go ahead. If the thing is, like, if you're playing a competent opponent, you can't win all fronts. It is impossible. So you have to focus on a certain part and win there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because if you play anyone who's decent, you're not going to win everywhere. This isn't, like, you know, dual strike, easy mode <laughs> or something. Like, you got to, like, go really hard in one part and crush them. And you can lose the other part, but just don't lose too bad. That's basically, like, the MO for Advanced Wars, like, competitive play. Like, win well in some parts and just don't limit your losses, but you don't have to win at your weak parts. If I ever become like a super pro and I make a smurf account, I'm gonna call it dual strike easy mode. <laughs> I don't even think it exists. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what happened there with the replay? Just skipped. Let's, uh, sometimes the replay function is uh, a bit weird. <laughs> Walker, please fix. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't anger him. <laughs> 
<laughs> so here we go. Yeah, okay, okay. Never mind. So now day nine comes in. You move your okay. So you move your battle copter to your weak side, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I was planning on putting it in the middle, but I guess I just went up there for some. I don't know. I don't know how to explain. I mean, you do you it do was, see the tank here, so it makes sense that I you, do see the tank there. That was probably what was going in my mind right there. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to commit too much stuff over there, but I figured a battle copter would you know at least get a pot shot off and you could run away to the other side or something. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, you continue to move out, you move your tanks in, you're focusing heavily, you have all your tanks down in the south at this point, whereas I have two tanks on the north side. So I made a stupid mistake here, I went from the infantry in this forest to capture over here, uh, forgetting about the tank here that had vision of me going over here to cap. Oh, okay. So that was just a stupid play on my part, I probably should have just kept it in there and just had these guys chill. See, they're not really doing much. They're in the mountains. They're just like hanging back, hiding in the forest. Because I realized this is your, I think this is your strong side at this point because of the mm, enemies. Yeah. So I'm just like, whatever infantry, just like stay back. Don't don't go too crazy. Okay, so that's your, if, if you meet a recon, for example, and you can't deal with it right away, you just pull your infantry back. You don't continue to go for captures. Yeah, typically I do that, especially if it's like a recon and a tank. Because that's just commitment to one side. Okay, all right. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, you continue moving infantry up, um, right now you're actually, now we, we can start to see the capture disparity here. Because now you have 20,000 income to my 17,000 on day 9. So now, now we're starting to see, uh, that you have a better capture game than me. So, and here- Yeah, and the comm tower too. Yeah, and boom, you interrupt my comm tower. So, uh, this was, uh, when I saw this, I was like, okay, two tanks and a recon, shit. Um, this is bad, because uh, now you have a 10% firepower advantage over me. Um, on planes, your tanks are basically max tanks, which is frightening. Um, and due to the fact that you attacked over here and showed your hand, that's why I felt confident going over here with these units over here. If you mm. hadn't attacked, I would have been more cautious. Right. So that's where this also com came into play. You gave me some intel over here when you attacked. And so, and my recon also has pretty nice vision. Whoa. Yeah, that uh, happens so, if you double click on a unit. <laughs> uh, so I barely missed this tank. I thought this tank over here was completely safe, but it was just barely in uh, range. Yeah, because uh, we can see the vision of your recon if we didn't. Uh, no, actually, we cannot. We can only do that on your <laughs> turn. Uh, I think yeah, it has to be my turn, I guess. Yeah, so the vision is... It has five visions, so one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so you can see the tank is right outside its vision range. So, so a little greedy with that pot shot, but you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So on my turn, I uh, cap some properties. I am up to 20,000. And I just decide to keep <laughs> going for the comm tower. Uh, I, I guess my, my idea is that, um, you know, if you stay around, we'll be able to punish you. So I'm just going to go, okay, whatever. I think that's one of the Mang's cardinal sins is like infantry overextending. Like, oh, yeah. You're usually, it's not your other units. You're pretty like, uh, you know, disciplined with your normal units. But your infantry, they love to overextend just like, Fuck it, I'm going for it. And like, just like run and try to capture. My <laughs> army is like surrounding them. And they're just going for it anyway. And I just annihilate them. That's so your... <laughs> I, it was a theme I noticed during this match. Like your infantry are like very brave. Mm, uh, yes, I, I, I do like to sacrifice. A bad type units. of brave though. Yeah. So uh, yeah, once again, not really doing a whole lot with this transport. Uh, I guess um, my thought process at this point was, hey, maybe I can exert some pressure on your comm tower. Of course, I don't think that's going to work, but, you know, I, it could have been that you just massed every single unit you had down here. I don't know how many. I, I can only see two infantry here at this point. I didn't know you had, like, a huge clump of them waiting around here. Yeah, they're just hiding. Just hiding. And, uh, yeah, so here I decide to take a shot at your tank. I don't think I had the movement to go into the forest, so it would have to be from this side. Uh, it's a pretty all right engagement. I think that's pretty standard in terms of luck. And, uh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I'm just capturing. I'm just not giving a shit about it. But I am calling back my tank stuff. And I, am I like how you build the anti-air here as well. You, it's like very anticipatory of a copter. You mm -hmm. haven't even seen mine yet, so I think that was a very smart move on your part. I had the same idea down here. You don't want to wait till you see a copter to build an anti-air. No. So that was a smart move on your part. I, I, I liked how you did that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll credit that to um, uh, Contabai was the one who taught me that uh, during our, okay. our match. He was always like, yeah, you always got to build, always got to build anti-air uh, in advance. Um, though I would say, I think I would have preferred the anti-air here. Because <laughs> I think having it in the center. Exactly, the flexibility. Yeah, because then you can, now this anti-air is pretty much it's only, I mean, you are consequently sending your copter to the north, which is nice. 
But uh, if I had it here, I could have had the anti-air here instead, and then it could have darted either way, depending on where you're... Because a Babacopter is going to show up at some point during a match. I mean, it's inevitable. Yeah. So, day 10, rolls in here. You actually build an artillery. You want to you wanna explain this decision right here? That's so, the, I, When looking at this map, it doesn't look very... I know you're playing as Jake, but looking at this map, it doesn't look like an artillery map. I wouldn't call it an artillery map, but I think the artillery are pretty viable. Like, these, this forest right here can lock down that uh, comm tower, as well as this forest over here. And I like these middle forests as well. Uh, they're also great. Uh, usually, I probably wouldn't build more than, like, two on this map. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't even need to put them in forest. You can just, like, have them backing up your units. Usually, when I have my weak side, I like having a lot of infantry and just throwing an artillery in there. It's surrounding their artillery with uh, infantry. So yeah. I only have to throw in 6,000 funds, and basically, you'll stay away when you see the artillery, you know, in oh, the yeah. infantry. Oh yeah, and being Jake, you have that annoying ability to give it extra range too, which is always incredibly annoying. Oh yeah, that was that was part of my thinking as well. It's like, hey, I'm Jake, I might as well use artillery. Oh yeah, and here you move your entire into the center, like I should have done with this one. Um, and yeah, moving in, the infantry are coming over to my comm tower, and I remember you did something here that I did not expect. Obviously, you take a shot at my tank, I did expect that. Um, mm. Oof, that's a good roll, too. <laughs> oh. Well, it's because I have the comm tower, I think. Ah, yeah, of course, of course. And, um... But yeah, yeah. Oh no, actually, I thought you pulled away this turn. But no, you actually did interrupt me. I, I, I misremembered. I seem, I, I remember that you pulled away from the comm tower pretty quickly, more, more quickly than I thought you would. Um, oh yeah, but I'll, I'll go into detail when it happens. And then there's a, see, that's where the twenty percent bonus comes into play. Got yeah, the planes yeah. and the comm tower. Just so destroying so already two too. very good tank engagements right here. One here, one here. I mean that's devastating. Let's see if I'm able to turn it around. And here comes the battlecopter too. I don't see it. One, two, three, four. No, I don't see it. So you're you're doing a good job at hiding it. And the battlecopter is the only reason why I actually took this engagement because I have no money, no idea how many tanks are in range as well. There could be two that would attack. Uh, but if because I have the battlecopter like covering this, like I always look at the range, making sure there's like overlap. Mm. Like, there's overlap with this tank. Another thing you want to make sure your units have overlap with one another so they can really back them up. Right, right, okay. And yeah, here comes the medium tank. I mean, we talked about this before. Uh, in a tank on tank yeah. battle, the medium tank is king. So, uh, yeah, and uh, like I, I give like a pretty like simple like caveman rule like C3 tank by medium tank like that's yeah. kind of an oversimplification uh, But at this point, I'm like, okay, I've seen like I don't know four of Mang's tanks It's probably time to tech up at this point. Yeah, and uh, you can definitely afford it because uh, Once again, you can see you, you still have that slight income lead over me uh, to mm -hmm. your your I mean I guess you could say you're one property ahead of me at this point um, cause you're supposed to be one property ahead, and you are two properties ahead, so already, like, it's a small difference, but it does really add up over the course of the match. So, here... <laughs> <laughs> there it goes, the brave infantry! <laughs> well, if you look at my vision right now, like, I'm not seeing any infantry, so I'm actually starting to wonder if you're just focusing everything you have on the south flank. Uh, so, okay. I'm, so I'm like, okay, might as well try to see if we can get away with this, but in hindsight, yeah, no, there's no, okay, no, gorilla way. Army no waiting, way, yeah. no way I'm going to be, I mean, I, I even, did I actually forgo my capture? No, I, I wasn't capturing, I was just, I unloaded the infantry this turn. Yeah. But yeah, like, I should have just captured here, instead of, probably. Yeah, yeah, this was, this was very ballsy, but I like taking risks. I, I did have that infantry <laughs> there that could capture here, though, so. And here I move in with my tank and uh, take a shot at your tank. Not yeah, I figured that would happen. Not seeing the bottlecopter, and I pop my side slip right away because I'm like, woo, movement. Mm, uh, that's good. And uh, I move down my tank. I take a shot at your recon. And yeah, I have to take a shot here instead of instead of capturing. Um, mm. and I agree with that. I don't think you should have captured there. Yeah, using Sorry. my using my infantry to scout the forest and take out the recon, which spots your tank, allowing me and the extra movement. I think, I let's see. Yep. Yeah. So without the power, I wouldn't have been able to move in here. So boom, takes out your second tank, and and I spot the third tank. So I'm feeling yeah. pretty good about this now. I have three tanks here, and I just took out one of your tanks, and I was able to pick off your infantry. I was very happy with this turn. I remember. And he, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> it's, you know, whatever. It's the recon. Yeah, I guess. I guess. It can but... take a hit. Maybe not two, but it can take a single hit. You know what? I think one of the reasons why I felt comfortable doing this is because... Um, did I did I know the Battlecopter was there before I moved in the recon? Let me see. No, I did not, actually. So I think I, think I did this just to see what you had coming. Okay. 
I was like, okay, I can sack the recon. I just want to see if he has some tanks coming this way. The movement allows me to move in air and capture, which is yeah. just incredibly. I mean, this is just part of the reason why I love Adder. You know, you can get your power yeah. so early. It allows you to get properties that you otherwise wouldn't get. Finish capturing. I take a shot with my 3 HP tank. Why not? Uh, even <laughs> trying to go for some luck damage here, but it failed. So I was sad about yeah, that. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> no comment on that. <laughs> no, please do comment on that. Like, just the Mang's infantry, man. It's like they have a mind of their own. Like the other units, they make sense, but your infantry is just like I'm going in. I'm fighting a tank. Like I'm capturing properties, like in the face of like the enemy force. It's just yeah. very strange to me. I, I guess um, I don't really know. I, I, I guess I thought that maybe I think if you I just rolled... think they're cheap or something, and that they're like very easily disposable. But it really can bite you in the end. Yeah, I was just, I think if I, I had this idea that if I rolled max luck and it was very, like it was on a very low HP, then maybe I could reduce it to one HP. I think, yeah, okay. I, th I think that was, but I ended up rolling shit and I didn't get any damage, so. And yeah, just using the movement boost to get my infantry out, uh, moving the transport in range of this infantry so I can get it on the next turn. I'm actually wondering, okay, so I think I, I see something that I could have done here. So what I could have done instead of moving this infantry, okay. You see what I could have done here? So oh, yeah. I could have moved. You could boost it. Yeah. yeah, I could have moved the copter back here, moved the infantry like this, moved it down, and then moved the infantry in perfectly in range. So. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're seeing it now. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's no, it's. It really, once you really start to think like that, you, you, a lot of opportunities are opening up. Uh, could I mean it's at the end of the day what it would have all it would have done was it would have boosted the infantry by one But that is a big deal. It can mean the difference between capturing a property and not capturing a property Oh, yeah, it's crucial in the early game right now probably not as important, but still like mm -hmm. no So the tank is moving in um, I'm positioning it here um, I guess I'm just expecting a lot of tanks to show up. So I'm, I'm getting my okay. I, w I was contemplating putting the tank here for safety uh, I don't really okay. know why I felt the need to put it here over the city. I guess I just wanted more, wanted it to be able to attack more things. It is a little bit more risky though. Okay. Yeah, it's out of my vision, so I don't see it yet. Yeah, and I also go medium tank because you know I good idea. I listen yeah. to what you just says. So. And um, you did it on the right side because you saw that all my tanks here earlier. You saw the recon stuff, so you know this is my strong side at the beginning. So you build a medium tank there. So that was a good move on your part. Nice, cool. I did something right. <laughs> uh, day 11 uh, rolls in, you move in your recon in the center, move your infantry toward, yeah, just continue to capture so, those, yeah. If I'm Mangs here, you'd probably go capture this property right here, I would assume. Oh yeah, for sure, I mean, what else? Would but you, you want to, I know that you have a whole bunch of units over here now, I'm scared, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to shift all my forces over here, that's why I built my medium tank over on this side, because mm -hmm. I'm slowly shifting all my power on this side. Well, you still think all my stuff is over here. So I'm not going to go in your face. I'm probably, I, I don't remember what I did, but I probably sneakily took that property over there where it's out of your vision. So you think that I should not capture here? No, as blue. If you were blue, oh, I think oh. you would You would capture it. They're oh, like, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> now I see. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you interrupt. You have very, you. like, uh, ballsy infantry. Mm hmm. Uh, move back. You're retreating your tank, attacking my recon. Oh, wow, okay. Your tank is coming in here, taking out my tank, interrupting my caps. You got a, you had a lot more infantry here than I thought you had. And oh, here- yeah, they were lying in wait. Here I remember- Oh no, I retreated, I didn't even, didn't even cap, so I was even being more uh, cautious, which I still agree with. Yeah, and I remember looking at this going, because I still thought most of your units were air. So I was like, oh my god, he's just giving me the comm tower. I thought you would just try to deny me the comm tower for the rest of the game, because that's what I would have tried to do. Yeah, see, that's the noob trap. People think, oh, the comm tower matters. The whole game is over if I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I have, like, won games where I haven't even captured the comm tower on this map. I have won games where I captured it, like, turn 20 or something. Mm -hmm. Because I have, like, 30,000 in income. They have 21,000. But they have, like, one or two comm towers. Like, comm towers, I don't want to say they're overrated, but you don't need to focus that much on them. Like, focus on good engagements. Don't just, like, sack all your units to get both comm towers. I think comm towers can be a psychological trap sometimes too. Oh yeah. Uh, in, in my second um, tournament match where I played against, uh, God, his name escapes me right now. Just Was that Wolf? Wolf, yeah. I played Wolf, he, he played from Bolt, I played Hawk. Uh, in the middle of the match, I was able to snatch his comm tower away from him, which mm -hmm. I think, I mean, it was a good move. I mean, like, obviously I take away 10% firepower for him, I get 10% firepower uh, for myself. 
after that, he started playing so incredibly weird. He started sacrificing tanks into my front lines to try and get his power. Like, he panicked. Uh, mm. And, and uh, like, he was actually in a very good position to win the game because he could have rushed my lab. Uh, but I think the comm tower capture freaked him out. I think once you take the comm tower, even if you're behind, uh, many opponents will overreact to that. They'll be like, oh my god, he has 20% firepower, I have 0%, oh my god. It's like, it's so bad, but yeah, you're right. If you have a 10,000 income advantage, then the comm tower is not going to win the game for you. Yeah, and I learned that on the opposite end, the first time I took Sammy on this map, and I took both comp towers, I was like, oh, good game. Yeah. Like, I think I was like, <laughs> Easy uh, you want to give up, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, I had like half the army, like 10 units, probably like 30. And I was just like, who? Oh. <laughs> like, you, sometimes you have to do the stupid things yourself to like, for it to like really sink in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so here you take out my infantry. And uh, already we can see... I like to compare unit value of like the end of player two turns just to get a little bit of a, a like you can already see there's a big gap is starting to form right here. So mm -hmm. I have 78,200, you have 94,000. So already we can see that many good, like already I'm behind here. Uh, and instead of pulling back and gathering my forces, which is probably what you should do when you're behind to try and get some good engagements, I'm just continuing to play aggressive, which I think is a, is a bad idea. Yeah, so I completely pulled away from here. So I have, like, nothing over here. So if these tanks are just chilling over here, they're not accomplishing anything at this point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I go for the capture. <laughs> All the captures. Oh, no, that's good for you. Yeah, if it's blue, that would have been bad. But, yeah, it's good for you. <laughs> so, uh, and, yeah, now I hear I decide to pull back a little bit, uh, moving my infantry. And, and here, this this was a, such a big mistake on my end. So here, this, this anti-air, uh, I know you have a battlecopter, right? I see it. So why, I don't know why I decide to move my anti-air over here. I think the, my reasoning was if you want to take a shot at it with your tank, it's on a city, so it get, gets repaired. Okay. But here, the anti-air can only deflect the battlecopter from the north. So obviously you'll go to the right here, and then you'll be out, outside its range. Um, so I was pretty, frustrated at this move after i did it i was like i should have probably moved the entire here or something or here mm. so. yeah yeah usually you don't want to linger with copters so when i shoot something on one front usually i shift over to the next front mm -hmm. or i just retreat back wait for the anti-air to come out and like kill an infantry or something and obliterate it then bring out the battlecopter again yeah 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 and here i move i think i'm sh starting to shift into the center i take a shot at your infantry Take another shot at your infantry. Uh, two, two <laughs> the big bad infantry on the lab. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can't <laughs> let you cap that lab. <laughs> does this lab serve any function on this map? I don't think no, it does. No, none whatsoever. But I swear, every time I play this map, the opponent always captures it. I'm like, <laughs> what are you, like, what? You're not going to get, like, Neo tanks or something. This is unlike Advanced uh, Wars 2. I think for some players with OCD, they they just have to capture properties when when they, they, they it, it hurts them to not uh, to leave a property un, uncaptured. I guess it does give you vision. It gives you that. That's one thing it gives you vision. It if I walk gives you over. one vision, yeah, for sure. That's <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a very small like outpost. And here, I uh, yeah, I decide to go for yeah, this. Yeah, you're pretty slow to cap this corner. I think I capped this corner a few turns ago. Yeah, I don't really. I guess it's just because I've been mucking about here and doing weird yeah, things. Yeah, the capture chain was kind of. Yeah. I would have used your bat, uh, your T copter instead of going over here. I probably would have gone over this side. Just oh yeah, for sure. Earlier, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I pull back with my one HP infantry. Yeah, just to decide to take shots at you, and uh, moving the recon over here. Just I, at this point, I was like, I'm just gonna try and take out as many of his infantry as I can. Mm. I do like to Little do that. I know that's. Little <laughs> do you know that's my strong side now. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I'm, I'm bringing all the, the big boys. Yeah, I still think all your tanks are here in the fog, and that you only have infantry on this side. I don't even know there's a medium tank coming. And three tanks, because why the hell not? Tanks are good, right? Yeah. Um, so here, you're starting to go for this city right here. Oh, you got a second medium tank on the on the south side now. Yeah, I probably should have built that in retrospect. I should have should have built that in the middle one, and then had more flexibility. But mm, yeah. yeah, whatever. And you move in with another recon. Always build recons on big maps, folks. It's important. Uh, yeah, I built them throughout the entire match. I never stopped. And you interrupt this capture, like, of course you would. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not letting you have that lab. Using that lab for some defense, take a good engagement with your tank right here. And uh, soon you'll see the most frustrating thing ever. <laughs> here comes the Balacopter. 
And moving in with the artillery, too. Pretty smart. Yeah, I gotta use that Jake Artie. And, yeah, uh, here's a stupid move on my part. I knew there was, I was something in there. Just about to I say, like, I was just about to say, I remember a certain someone scolding me for attacking with my <laughs> anti-air and not you using, them for, resist. using them for zoning. Uh, yeah, you knew it was so stupid because I attacked with an infantry first, so you know I didn't plan attacking that at the beginning <laughs> of the turn, so I just attacked with that. So mm -hmm. that was just stupid on my part. Uh, I got lucky you didn't have a battlecopter here. If you had a battlecopter here, you'd be able to punish me for it. Yeah. Uh, so I got a little lucky here. That was yeah. Like I said, you know, even I make mistakes a lot of the time. So it's, happy to point them it's out. It's so tempting. Like there's nothing more tempting than seeing an infantry with an anti-air. You you just you want to take a shot at it because it does so much damage. It's a trap almost. You know. Yeah. And, well, the uh, main thing was I just wanted vision on this tank in the forest. I saw it enter and I wanted at least one unit to uncover it, and I didn't have anything else to uncover it. So I basically used it for twofold: uncover the tank in the forest, get a shot on it. You yep. also kill the infantry. But yeah, I mean, you're getting a lot of good engagements here, and uh, you're also you also get to capture this property, which yeah, I patiently waited till I saw that all your tanks are over here now, and now I'm like going after it. I retreated for a bit, saw that you moved all your units, and now I'm back at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, here comes a second anti-air. That's interesting. So you haven't even seen a bottlecopter, and you're building a second. I knew I messed there. up. I knew I messed up with this Antair, and I was like, well, I'm an idiot. Might as well build another. I think that was literally my train of thought. Oh, yeah, because now I'm able to take down your Antair. If if I had a bottlecopter here, I could have focused your Antair and had free reign. Like, exactly, and I just anticipated that you did, so I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. It well, would have been so devastating. If, if I had a bottlecopter here, I could have, this turn would have been so devastating, because I could have literally yeah. taken out your Antair, and then I could have taken out your bottlecopter with my bottlecopter, exactly. and then I would have had so. free reign in the center here. Yep, so that was, like I said, big mistake on my part. Mm -hmm. And a second Bottlecopter. Pulling your units yeah. back for repairs. And here comes a very frustrating turn. So here I see the Bottlecopter. And look at that, even with outer side slip, it's not enough. So you are perfectly outside range of my entire. If I had just put it here, this Bottlecopter would have been dead by now. So, uh, and yeah, here I take a shot just to get power, really. Mm. And I pop my power again. And I take a shot at your tank. Take oh, I think I rolled low there. And yeah, well, like finally, I'm starting to capture this property right yeah. here after 2,000 years. My recon running out of fuel. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Got some good use out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> the tank driver is officially drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that till what? now. Is this, 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 <laughs> <laughs> this, this that, is that why? That's why you're running out of fuel, man. Your <laughs> units are like, Ooh, like. Oh, what the hell? How, how do I even make that move? I have no idea. <laughs> how does this happen? This is no. This is uh. You saw that? Isn't like the Chinese version of Adder's thing like snake bite or something? <laughs> you're, like, you're, you're like snake bite <laughs> role playing or something. <laughs> I have no idea how I did that. But yeah, I take a shot at your on fire. A 4 HP on tire can still do decent damage to Bottlecopters, though. Yeah, that could still easily do, like, probably, with my Comp Tower and the Planes bonus, like, 6 damage. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, I I think I, I, I move... Here, I'm recognizing that the bottle is definitely, like, shifting to the center. So, uh, yeah. I guess, guess neither player has a weak and strong side now, since we're both, like, vying for the center. I move in here. I didn't know there was a medium tank here. Man, this, honestly, I'm pretty happy about this move right here, because it takes out one of your yeah. infantry, and it reveals the medium tank. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad move at all. So, and as long yeah. as you're not trying to cap this property. If you try to cap this property, that's when we got a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely seeing that right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, I would just like to point out that like your psychological mindset matters a lot when you play, and especially in Fog of War, where you're not able to see the opponent's income. I remember very vividly on this turn right here. I was like, oh, I bet he has like a twenty-eight thousand income. <laughs> And then I decided to do something that I almost never do. I just started to count the properties. And this is something that you should take your time to do, especially if you're not very familiar with the map. I mean, if you play this map a million times, you know. You, you, you instinctively know when you're tied with your opponent in terms of captures. But for me, I haven't played that much on Stalingrad. So uh, at this point, I remember just taking a moment to just count your properties and saying, okay, he has, okay, he has 24,000. He is tied with me in income right now. Take a deep breath. You don't need to like be super reckless and try to take his properties. You're doing just fine. Slow down. Very no, important. No, that's really smart. I I also do the counting thing. Before I was just like, it's really hard to count. My my rule is like, oh one two. Like you don't do that. I go row by row. It's like yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. There's that's three exactly up here, what I did. Two. You have to do it that way, or else you're just gonna mess up. 
Exactly. I completely agree. Another thing I like to count is the spaces it takes to get from a base to a place. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to overextend and bring my medium tank, I don't know, 24 some spaces where it only takes like 11 spaces over here or something. So that's another thing to count other than properties is how long does it take a unit to get to another space? Yeah, yeah, very important. Uh, and here you can see like I'm not reaching a botocopter, which this botocopter is just having a field day in the center here. And uh, yeah, your turn rolls in and here it comes. Blood rock. I'm about to get served right here. So yeah, <laughs> medium tank, one shot on planes. Oh my god. So that's a medium tank with 50% extra firepower. Yeah. Three, no, six. Wait. 60 with the comp tower, I think. Yeah, so yeah, 60 because you get a 10% baseline and then 40% from the planes and then 10%. Yeah, 60% firepower. So that's, uh, I think that's as much as a uh, max blast, isn't it almost? It's at least as much as Jess is. I'm not sure about Max. Mm. And here, yeah, you get a bunch of really good shots here. Really utilizing that planes bonus. Interrupting my cap. The recon. That plus two movement, man. It's so nice. It's glorious. Yeah. Takes Artillery doing something. Mm -hmm. once. Yeah, look at that. Taking a shot. And boom, man. That, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, and you can't really do anything with your medium tank because they have the. it's surrounded by shoals, so it's a very strategic point. Yeah, even though the lab is not like a prop tier when it capture, it's very good to hold it still. And I also have another medium tank connected, which is useful. Mm -hmm. I so. like to connect my units, as I mentioned earlier, to make sure they reinforce one another. So yeah. let's say that you had like two medium tanks and they get a KO, then I at least have another one to like come in and take a pot shot. Absolutely. You get to take out my anti right here, which I was so frustrated about this. I was like, oh my god, I have to build. And I don't have another one built, so. Oh yeah, and then I did the flex. Well, you'll, you'll see. Oh, all right. There's a flux coming. Okay, good. I, I didn't know this. Flex incoming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, you take out my tank. Oh, right. The copter killing the oh, anti. Oh, because, like, yeah, Jake's This still is a moral victory right here. Yeah, because Jake victory. still gets the bonuses on planes for his air units. A lot of new players don't know this. But uh, the same thing goes with Cole and Kindle. They're battlecopters. As long as they're above their respective terrain, they still get the boosts. And that can really screw you over. So, uh, oh, yeah. here we go. And here comes the transport. That's interesting. So what, what's up with building the transport this late? Are you just flexing or? No, no, I thought that you were very weak up here. Uh, not very many. I mean, I don't know if you captured this at this point over here, but I know you don't, haven't gotten this and you're not gonna get this one. So I figured I'd just pump infantry up here. Maybe even go for like an HQ cap later, but my main idea was like, I need to get this like corner property from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so that makes sense. Um, Move my recon. I mean, at least this recon is having a field there. Yeah, up here. you know, he's doing good. Yeah. And, uh. <laughs> <Jake>. <laughs> a great engagement. Yeah, yeah, Jake playing infantry, man. They're the worst. So, yeah, here I move in with my tanks. Uh, I'm not really getting great engagements here. I'm picking off some infantry, but I'm not really doing anything to your units in the center, so. Here's another uh, Mang's Cardinal Sin. Using medium tanks and huge other units to, like, randomly attack infantry. Like, yeah. I think you're better off keeping this like hidden over here or something, or not hidden, but like out of vision of my stuff, keeping it and lying in wait. You're gonna get your power soon. Build up some forces, then strike. You know, right? Because now I see your tanks, your medium tanks over here. I'm like, oh, this tank is gonna die. Like he doesn't have backup. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I guess I just I didn't want you to start capturing my properties here. Uh, but I yeah. think that other tank probably would have been sufficient. See that one other tank down there, and you have one infantry. Like, yeah. Probably been yeah, okay, right. So we've identified many Manx Cardinals since this match. That's good. <laughs> uh, okay, moving my infantry, uh, my tank back. I joined Cap. Yeah, I there, yeah there we go again. I killed you with the artillery, but you're just like, you got a Cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really know why I thought this would work. I mean, yeah, no, that was... It's just like in like a movie or something, like, you know, the character's gonna die and they go off the battle kind of deal. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, absolutely. So here, uh, yeah, it's just like use my transport to try and get the property over here. So day 14 rolls in right here. Yeah, your artillery is just going to keep interrupting that cap. No way I'm going to get that one. I should just pull the infantry back. And here comes the second battlecopter. More artillery even. Yeah, I wanted to, I saw the medium tank over here and I was like, I can plop it in one of these forests. And yeah, that'll try, probably be sufficient. Try to get lucky, you know. Um, 
And here, oh, plan oh that, yeah, that's, that hurt. Like that I hurt. said, I, I saw the medium tank down there. If I didn't see it, I would have assumed you had more forces. But since you revealed your hand to kill, I don't even think you killed the infantry. I think you brought it down to one HP. Yeah. Like, I was just like, you know what? That tank's good as dead. Yep, absolutely. And then you get a free shot, so. And then the other medium tank goes. <laughs> and then the other, and now <laughs> my vision's gone. <laughs> Now the vision is gone, and here comes the bomber. Always, uh, I love building bombers, man. It's fun. They're great units. Yeah. When I see like multiple big units, usually I build a bomber. I don't even think I saw more than one medium tank at this point, but I was like, I have funds. Like, yeah, eh, why not? And here you're pulling back a little bit, which I think is smart. You're very far ahead of Mali right now, but you're still not overextending. Yeah, yeah. I recognize you have the medium tank there. I'm not going to try to cap any properties or anything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm doing the same thing. I'm, once again, going for the caps. I guess this is fine, though. You don't have that. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree with you going for the caps. You have all your forces down there. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. Gotta resupply the recon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here with this transport, honestly. Like, I guess... Yeah, it's not really doing any... I think I think my, 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 my intention is right here is to move it up here and bring another unit out. But I should have probably used it to, to, to bring this guy forward. Again. I'm curious if that recon survives the entire game. You know, it's we'll, we'll see. We'll it's see. It's lived a long life. I'm, I'm kind of rooting for it to survive. Now. <laughs> we will see what you do. So the bomber is coming forward here. Our jewelry is moving forward. You're starting to cap my property right now, which is. I mean, we're tied. You can see we're tied in income right here, but you're far ahead of me in value. But there's still two juicy properties right here, which yeah. I won't be able to stop you from taking. And you get yourself trapped by my one HP infantry. Yeah, that's pesky infantry. <laughs> there we go. And yeah, now you're shifting your attention towards my HQ, I see. Well, yeah, I realize that, I mean, I, there's probably units here, but you don't really want to overextend in, within like one turn of base. So it's like, okay, I've gotten control of the middle. Now I'm going to shift over this side, capture these like four or five properties, etc. Yeah. I don't want to overextend and yeah, I'm not going to get this one or this one or this one or that one. Like... You can't get too cocky, you know? No. I've, I've lost games, and I've won games where I either I overextend or the opponent overextends. Mm -hmm. No, but that's important. Never overextend. That's really bad. There we go. You take out my infantry. Another battlecopter is coming in. Artillery is placing itself yeah. into the middle. Beautiful, beautiful artillery placement protecting my medium tank right there. Yeah. And the infantry. And covering well, two cities. And covering two cities, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, here we go. You're moving in. I think I anticipated a bomber from you. That's why I have my artillery covering my medium tank, because I know you saw both medium tanks. Yeah. And like I said earlier about having a strong side and a weak side, you notice that I brought my medium tank down here instead of just putting it all up here. The reasoning is, early on in the game, uh, I had a strong side and a weak side, but now I've realized that I've basically won the battle up here. Like, my intel is saying there's not very many units up here, mm -hmm. so I'm feeling pretty confident now that it can reinforce my weak side right and, you know, right make it more even down here now this battle up here is essentially one for now temporarily temporarily one of course but for now it's it's one okay all right interesting okay so um uh, day 16 rolls in i move in two re i don't really know why i built two recons i think one would have sufficed here um you never can go with too many too little uh, recons i think i have like one two Hmm. Yeah, I guess I only have two at this point. I think I build a bunch later. I like recons in this map a you lot. You can see my vision <clears> down here is not good. I, I wish I had a recon down here. Yeah, yeah, you have two medium tanks and they have garbage vision. Yeah, it's it really sucks. Um, I have a neo tank though, so... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know... Okay, on the golf balls. We, we got a little bit of a bug here. Uh, yeah, that happens sometimes. It'll fix at the It'll, end. Uh, yeah, it, these visual... Yeah, there we go. They, they always fix themselves. Oh, at the you end attacked a pipe seam. Yeah, taking I did. Out your, taking I, out your anger on a pipe scene. <laughs> so, I I saw that you had a lot of stuff here, and I figured the fastest route to you was through the pipe. Uh, because, um, like, I could have... I don't think it, if I moved around here, because I think uh, one, two, three, four, five, six... Yeah, so by shooting the pipe scene, I'm able to get my Neo Tank here a little bit quicker. Like maybe okay, one or two, one or two extra movements. That was the reason why I did that. And yeah, I also wanted to blast something. It's true. <laughs> so here we go. Yeah, you're starting to exert pressure on this city right now. That's what, yeah, though I brought the two copter up. I knew there was an infantry just chilling up there. So yeah, yeah, I've noticed a lot of people tend to leave an infantry here, just to. Oh, yeah, I did the same for the longest time. Yeah. Just to ward away any potential like straggler infantry looking to take the city. 
Uh, if you have a oh, yeah. if you have a single infantry on the city, even if you get the first strike, it will win the engagement because it's shoal versus city. So. Exactly. So here you go, another and pesky a battlecopter that's out of a running low on ammo. That's my worst nightmare. Yeah, that was the one that was up here originally. You remember it? Yeah. It went like I said, hit and run down over here, down over here. And then I was thinking, okay, now Meng sees it here. He's going to bring his anti air down here, and that's why I have my other one up here. Mm -hmm. So I need, you, so I'm trying to split you up. So at this point, I think you, I thought you only had one anti air, but you actually have two. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, just seeing a low, like whenever you see a low ammo flashing sign on a botocopter, that's like the ultimate sign that that botocopter has been way too effective. Um, so here Spoiler you go. alert, I think it actually gets zero ammo. <laughs> it's, uh, it went home with a, a, a gold star or bronze medal, whatever the term it is. Probably, yeah. yeah. And, and once again, you're just not letting me have the captures down here, man. And now even going for my calm that was, tower. That was kind of a Mang's cap right uh, there. That was really. a But you can, you can afford to do this when you're ahead, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was a little... Yeah, whatever. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. He's not going home to see his family. Oh, I'm sorry. you did well, Recon. And using the anti-air, you've been very ballsy with your anti-air, but... Yeah, I admit, at this point, I'm getting kind of cocky. Yeah, I'm like, like you clearly... I mean... I got a lot of income. Like, I got a lot of funds to spend. Like... Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm approaching $200,000 of units. Yeah, just one last side slip to, uh, to salute the troops, you know? <laughs> using a neo tank to interrupt capture that's always uh, that's always amazing you know see i i, I do believe i i i was feel, i felt a little good about this but it's not going to be enough and, and once again just using a medium tank to interrupt a capture it's not good look at all this i mean i guess you could uh, do, does Drake get extra range from his normal he pump? does yeah yep. uh but i saw those units i'm like yeah it's getting a shot off regardless because mm -hmm. i can do enough damage to get my superpower regardless. yeah I'm you're very close you're very close to getting it here actually i build a second <laughs> neo tank <laughs> i mean at this point i'm just struggling the rule of alive. threes again yeah. yeah you know i gotta build three units in a row <laughs> you once again go for the cop can't come tire right here but yeah once i yeah, see it's one vision yeah yeah once i see this bomber right here it's like oof. uh not yeah, good. I was just trying to get some like damage done just so I can pop the. Uh... And this is a good. Oh, I mean, this is okay. a good engagement, right? Because um, I mean, even even if you get the bomber shot down, it's still taking out a neo tank worth as much as it's cost, right? So. Yeah. So uh, here, uh, you, yeah, you also get a shot with your artillery on my medium tank. So just good engagements all around here, even threatening my. And you pop your superpower mid turn here. Yeah, I just wanted the. I was just. I wanted this hit really badly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that was about it. Because that's not a very I good superpower, but I mean, eh, you got something. No, I mean, it helped with reinforcement. It brings all these guys, you know, eight uh, move instead of six. So, I mean, it's not the best. My, my first one is clearly better, but mm -hmm. at this point, I'm like, eh, whatever. Yeah, and at this point, I do believe I resign. Pretty sure. Oh, no, you kept going. You were <laughs> you were <laughs> determined. I remember I was like, why hasn't he resigned yet? Oh, yeah, no, I, I wanted to see if I could. Because if you look at my vision, I don't see how much you have here. Yeah, it's true. But I should know, like, based on how poorly the encounters have gone, I should know how much you have at this point. But yeah, no, I I keep going for quite some time here, but, and you're just kind of taking a get out. At this point, and There's it's, the copter. There's the copter, copter down here. Yeah, zero ammo. Zero. Zero ammo on He's that button. He's going home. Uh, <laughs> a nice present. Yeah, I think I might actually kill him, though, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So I guess he's not going home. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> His, his family gets a, a Best Buy gift card or something now. Yeah, at this, at this point, you're like, gotta gotta get those Neo Tank uh, plans, you know? Like, gotta bring him home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this went on for a lot longer than I thought. I thought I yeah, was signed on day 16. No, you kept going. <laughs> I, guess. Yeah, I remember I had like triple your uh, your unit value at one point. Yeah, like it was getting bad. Uh, I mean, you're like, you know, winning at the top over there, but I wasn't really caring that much at this point. Yeah, because uh, I had two gonna... Neo tanks right here, so I think I felt pretty good about that. But at I the was end front of... switching again, where I just went all out on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at the map control you have compared, you can see the whole map. I can barely yeah. see it. And yeah, here Let's comes see, it. I have so many recons. I'm not stopping with the recons. I love recons. There's the ultimate flex right here, the stealth fighter. Uh, yeah, I was just like, whatever. You don't like stealths, you said. Not really. That's why I built the. I built like what two or three bombers beforehand. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of like a last resort kind of thing. Yeah. 
So why don't you like stealths? Uh, they're just a lot of money. It's 29k in funds because you have to build an APC with it. Mm. Um, six movement, not seven like the bomber. Oh, yeah. It doesn't one-shot or come close to a one-shot on a Neo tank or medium tank like a bomber does. Um, you know, it's good for some purposes, like shielding other units when it's hidden, but like... Yeah. Eh. The only reason I build stealth usually is when I'm far ahead in like income, and I force them to dedicate 20,000 to get a fighter. Right, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. and it's a That's basically it. And I know your income at this point is like, yeah, 20,000 thereabouts. I'm like, okay, I'm going to force them to get a fighter once I reveal my stealth. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a nice coup de grace movement, honestly. So here, yeah, I think... I was being reckless with my bomber. I wanted to reinforce this Neo tank over here. Whoops. Mm -hmm. uh, but I should have moved it down here instead. But, you know, feeling feisty, feeling good, so... Yeah. Yeah, I, I think in my head I did a lot better than I thought I did at this point. Looking back at it, I mean, I think it's because I have two Neo tanks. So I'm like, I'm still, yeah. in this, I'm still in this match. I can do something. <laughs> two, <laughs> two recons once again. Uh, I really want that vision. I'm noticing I don't have a lot of vision. You come in with yeah. yet another bomber. I mean, oh my god. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there comes the APC resupplying the stealth. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, like I said, 29k right there. Mm -hmm. And I think I like just. Do I pull back here? No, I'm just chilling. I don't even think I moved that one Neo tank. Seems like you're just preparing for an attack on my HQ. I do remember. I, yeah, I think it's. I think it is like I have a superpower coming. I'm just gonna like wait till you trigger it, and that's when I release. Yeah, you're. Oh just... no, the the battlecopter is escaping. Wow, look at that! 18 fuel, it's... zero ammo. He's going home. He's getting a hundred dollars <laughs> Best Buy gift card for his family. <laughs> So yeah, here comes my Neo Tanks. I take out your recon, but again, like it's just minor victories at this point, and I'm placing them right in killing range of. So yeah, they're both on the shoal. Like, they're both uh, on the shoal. Zero defense. Oh my god, this is gonna hurt. I can. I I remember this. But hey, part. you got the cap right here. I got, finally, <laughs> I got a safe cap. At long last, I think you dropped it. Um, I don't think I did. I think I was just like, I can get like seventy thousand dollars in damages. Oh yeah. And I'll let you have the 1k property. Yeah, so here I'm kind of pulling back and gathering my forces, but all I'm doing is just serving them up to you on a silver platter right here, because this this block rock is going to hurt. So Yeah, this, this is a decisive block rock. Yeah, so here we go. Here comes the block rock, and yeah, just let's just watch the carnage here, shall we? Here it comes. Stealth fighter. Neo tank. Bomber. Oh, what? Oh, 2HP bomber. Okay, now I didn't see that yeah, first. still alive. Neo tank. Oh my god, this is not pretty. Jesus Christ. Oh, there <laughs> comes the attack on the HQ as well. Medium tank coming out of the fog to attack. And following <laughs> it up with a bunch of captures. Wipes up my anti-air. Starts capping like four of my properties in a single <laughs> turn. If I don't resign now, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just kept going. I was like, <laughs> uh, you, have what? you have one third of my... Uh, Unit value. It's like, uh, should I tell him? And I'm, I'm, and I'm sitting here going like, I hate it when people don't resign. It's BM. Waste the time. I have a Neo tank. I'm gonna win. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I guess just me not seeing the value and seeing how much you have made it kind of hard for me to pinpoint exactly how far you were ahead at this point. But yeah, now you're, now you're just blatantly going for all the properties. Yeah, here. I would. I was about to HQ cap. Yeah, absolutely. And, I uh, built a fighter because I was anticipating your fighter to stop the stealth, but you didn't even build a fighter. I didn't, I didn't have the defense. money. I didn't have the money, dude. Yeah. I, I'm spending so much in repairs, and I'm behind. I'm You're 10,000 ahead of me in income, so. The copter has been resupplied for those who care Look out there. Look at that. We He's... take care of our veterans. Oh, my God. Someone in the comment section, please. I know because there's, there's some big nerds there out there watching. I want you guys to go through this match and calculate the value of this one battle copter. Just post it in the comments. I know someone's going to be crazy enough to do it. Tell, tell me how much damage this Bottlecopter did in funds. All I right. think you resigned here. Here we Thank go. God. Finally. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Should have resigned like five days ago. But yeah, so looking at this match right here, I, I've definitely taken some pointers away from this. Um, this is I felt this was extremely educational for me. Uh, I need to really sharpen up my infantry movement. Yeah, that's that was your main thing for you is caps and like uh, infantry ca chain caps making sure you like optimize it and also just not overextending going for random caps yes uh, basically while my forces are surrounding them yeah and stop taking shots at infantry with medium tanks it's much more important to hide the medium tanks than it is to reveal them just to do nine hpf damage to an infantry positioning is huge just like your game versus hampelman like 
your medium tank went far away from the fight and killed an infantry unit and basically was irrelevant until it died to a rocket fire later on. Like, yeah. You want to have position. Positioning is a lot more important than killing, like, one infantry, you know? Absolutely. And, yeah, I think, yeah, just uh, looking at I mean, I, I'm not, I've never been fond of Stalingrad, but looking at it again right here, you are right. There are so many good chains, capture chains here that the infantry can take, and I missed so many of them. Obviously, I wouldn't say that's the reason I lost this match, because we were relatively tight in, in, in income for a very long while. I think it's just your yeah. engagements were so much better than me. You got two very balls. You got two very good tank engagements in the early game, and that kind of just set the it set the tone for the match. You were always like just one or two tanks ahead of me. Uh, mm -hmm. and just use that. But there were like tons of little mistakes here. How I positioned my entire, how I didn't... I think I, I didn't focus on one side. I kind of tried to split between two sides, as exactly, you Exactly, yeah. And that kind of... So I was able to win one side, and the other side you weren't able to do anything. The tanks were just kind of sitting there. Yeah. I will say, I think it is a, it's tough to fight Jake on this map. I do think Jake is very strong on this map. But I don't think I would have yeah. won if the CS were reversed either. So, uh, but yeah, no, this was uh, extremely educational. Do you got any last comment, like any, anything you want to add to this? Uh, I think we just about covered everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like I said, with the infantry and positioning is another Mang's cardinal sin. Uh, just don't, also like hammering home early, don't freak out if you're comm tower if you don't have it and at a certain point in time. Uh, stuff like that. Just fundamentals. Mm -hmm. um, and positioning, making sure you have units supporting each other, making sure like I had this bomber supporting this neo tank in case it's attacked by another neo tank. Just stuff like that, making sure there's overlap between units. Yeah, and I think what I want to do is, after after we're done with this commentary, uh, we're, we should start up a new match on this map again. Oh. And uh, let's play another match, and uh, let's see how much... If okay. I'm, let's see the difference between this match and the next. See if there's any... I mean, I don't have any illusions that I'm going to win, but I'm going to try my best. Uh, and um, and uh, let's see if I'm able to take some of the pointers and learn from them. And we can maybe we can oh, do yeah. another analysis on the next game and see if you can find any of the same Manx Cardinal sins that I did in this one. And if there are, we got to drill those out of my out of my system. Oh, yeah. Sure. I think you'll, you'll, you'll get rid of them. They're, they're you know, simple things. Just mm -hmm. the infantry thing, it's just I know it's like... Maybe it's part of your personality, just like, just going for it, you know, like... It, it is, when I think about how I like to play, yeah, I, I do, I do like to play Reckless with infantry. Uh, I think this is, and I, against less skilled opponents, I do think this can often take them off guard. Um, you know, yeah. when they're not, because it, it, it freaks them out, you know, when you when you do daring maneuvers. But against the skilled player, they're just going to shut that down immediately. Yeah, and you'll also lose a lot of unit count. That's another thing we didn't really go over too much, but I have more than double your unit count. It's less usually about, like, the... I find unit count a lot more indicative of who's winning rather than mm -hmm. the funds by the opponent. Because you can have, like, fighters and, you know, units tied up with a lot of funds that aren't doing that much. Yeah, but for sure. But I find that infantry are crucial. Yeah, if one yeah. side has 40 units and the other side has 25, then usually it's the, the unit with 40 sides that wins. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, this was super educational. Thank you so much for uh, yeah, going through this game and uh, teaching me. My and, pleasure. Uh, as always, guys, if you just has a channel, you can check it out. Linked in the description. Go check out his uh, latest video. It'll be linked at the end of this video as well. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me, Digis. This was nice. We'll have to do oh, this yeah. again sometime. For sure, man. That was a pleasure. All right. Bye, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, Peace. all that stuff. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>